in this video, I want to show you something you can do with XAML. And what I want to show you is how you can actually use XAML for your own everyday .NET objects. I'm going to start out by creating a simple WPF application, then we're going to extend it by actually using XAML to not just create controls and whatnot in WPF, but to actually use it for my own whatever. So let's go ahead and just create something really simple here. I'm going to create a WPF application right here, WinFX, Windows application, right, Avalon. Okay. And I want to create my XAML example. Okay. And I think I'm running about the February CTP, and to get that, I had to go to MSDN and download the runtime components. I had to go ahead and get the SDK, which is like a gig, so watch out for that one. And then I had to also get the Visual Studio add-in here. So I have here, I'm looking at Cider, the nice little gooey drag-and-drop VB-ish type of guy here. But I'm not going to use that. I'm going to pretend I'm a real programmer and go over here to the uh, actual declarative code here and work in this. And I'm just going to put some stuff in here. Before I do, I want to go ahead and bring in one more guy. I'm going to bring in our friendly LBL Gen abstraction. So we're here of Northwinds. Let me go ahead and reference that. Okay. Let's go ahead and add that. And we're going to need another assembly here. This guy right here. Okay, so we should be good. Except for the fact we're going to need an app config. Okay, now that's all the overhead we have to do. So what do I want to do? Alright, what we have here is we have a window object with a grid object in that. That's it. Seriously, there's nothing else to it. Don't overthink it. So let's go ahead and just put some stuff in here. I want to go ahead and on this grid, which is basically just a grid, I want to go ahead and declare that there's going to be some columns in here. I want to go ahead and say what the columns are. Column definition, this one's going to be 200-ish wide. And this one's going to be, well, just this is going to be. So there we go. Actually, I kind of like, to like that. So there we go there. Now, I'm going to have something with a border over here, just a border, and I want it to be at grid column 0, and really to the right of that, I'm going to have a stack panel, which is basically just a thing where it allows you to stack or put things next to each other, just things, whatever, objects or whatnot. So, let's go ahead and just add something in here. I want this to be a grid column 1, so just the right of it. And we go over here to the designer and see, yeah, sure, yeehaw, right? So now let's go ahead and put something in here. And it's left guy, and we're going to put a list box. List box, right? And at this point, I want to make a decision, okay? I just want to tell you my decision. My decision was find something to this list box. So I'm going to go ahead and hop over to the source and say that the data context for this guy is going to be something, okay? I'm just going to create something called data connector or something. That, that's not even close to what I said. Here we go. Data connector dot get employee data, okay? So there we go. Let's go ahead and create a little or a static class here. public, static, whatever, right? So, public, static, employee, collection, bring in that namespace, and employee data, I really have no idea what I called that. Short term memory here. Okay, get employee data, that would actually make sense. So, okay. Nothing fancy. Okay, there we go. So there we go, that's all we really should need. Let's go ahead and just save this guy, and we should be done over here. And so we set the data context. So the data within this thing is going to go ahead and bind 
it's going to bind from this. Okay. Let's go back over to our XAML. And let's go ahead and say that our item source is binding. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead and create a item template here. In the template, we're going to create a text block. Or excuse me, I'm going to go ahead and create a data template. Within the data template, I'm going to create the text block. Text equals binding, and let's say first name. I'll call it last name, it makes some more sense. Okay. And that was not even close to being right. Data template, there we go. And I see what we got so far. So I ran it, and we're binding from LLBL gen, you know, from the database through LLBL gen to interface. And we have this stuff on the left hand side. Pretty simple. And let's go ahead and take this a little bit further by actually doing something with this. I'm going to go ahead and create a stack panel here, nested one. Let's set the orientation to horizontal. And let's say text block text equals first name. Okay. And I'm going to put another text block in here, which is actually going to connect to that binding, and it's actually going to be first name. And another stack panel here. This is actually going to be city, and just connect to the city. There we go. Now let's go ahead and see what we have here. Oops, forgot something. Oh, there we go. Okay. And you can see we have this nice little binding over here. And if we click over here, we see nothing's happening. It's because we haven't set up synchronization. Let's go ahead and do that real quick. We want synchronization to be on. So that's a true. Run it again. And I'll see that when I click, everything just automatically binds. Just magic, right? and pretty this up a little bit here, put some stuff in here. And now let's just take this a little bit further. Let's go one, one step further real quick and say within the stack panel here, I actually want to say stack panel background. Okay. And I want to go ahead and say that I want a, um, a linear gradient brush. This is where some of the more interesting stuff of XAML actually comes in, or XAML with regard to graphics and whatnot. I'm going to set up a gradient stop, and I want it to be at color white at the offset of zero, and let's add two more here, at five and then at one. I want this guy to be aqua and then blue, just because I want it to be extremely ugly. Let's go ahead and run this, and there we go, something that is probably the worst thing you've ever seen. So, there we go. I, I, I try. All right. Let's go ahead and get rid of this. Now, let's see what we've done here. We basically have some object. We have an object under this, and we have some, you know, collection set here, and we're setting some you know, properties up here, and doing this, and we're binding, and doing all kinds of stuff. And it's basically a bunch of objects underneath other objects. Object here, it has, you know, it has these guys. Basically a property set here with some other objects in it. And it just objects under other objects. And this is all .NET stuff. I can go ahead and do all this manually in C Sharp if I wanted to. But I'm doing it declaratively. Okay. So let's go ahead and do something a little more interesting. How do I do this? How do I do this myself? I mean, somehow in, in the cosmos here, they manage to, you know, be able to do this stuff in code here. What if I wanted to have my collection here? What if I want to have my employee collection in here? Wouldn't that be cool? Let's go ahead and see what happens. Let's go ahead and run this. Oh, complete and utter disaster. Look at that. Blah, blah, blah. This is not even in that namespace. Okay, whatever. So let's go ahead and remove that. And now we're back to, you know, happy times and whatnot. So what we have to actually have to do is we actually have to add something in here. What I want to do is I actually want to go back here and say, or rather here, and say, I don't want to set this data context, okay? 
I actually want to set the data context declaratively. Well, that's getting kind of cryptic. Now we're not even dealing with this. So now we're not touching the data connector at all. Matter of fact, let's just go ahead and prove that to the world here. Prove that to the world here and, you know, get rid of that. Let's go ahead and just go back to our XAML here and just do something. What I want to do is I want to create a mapping up here. Mapping with the XML namespace. I want to map the XML namespace. I want to map it to this, rather. Of the Northwind Collections. Okay. Which is the CLR namespace. Northwind of DAO dot collection classes. You can blame me for that verbosity because that's actually what I named this guy over here. Northwind.dal, and of course, these are in my collection classes. So there we go. So now I'm going ahead and just hooking that up there. And there's one more thing. Who could forget the most important thing? What assembly is this guy? Northwind.dal. So now we actually have. We're setting up a mapping here, right? So you have something to start off with. And now I want to go and do it and put an XML namespace in here. XML namespace, I'm going to call this Northwind Collection equals, and I'm just going to go ahead and give it this name. Now I have a mapping to this. Now what I want to go ahead and do is within this window, this number over here, if we go over here, we were in the window. I don't know if you notice this, but we were actually in a window object. And we actually set the data context of this window. Okay? So that's the exact same we want to, same thing you want to do over here in the XAML. So let's go ahead and say window that data context. Wow, look at that. It was actually an internal sense, like that. So I'm gonna go ahead what I want to go ahead and do is say this employee collection. Okay. Now I want to go ahead and just bind it somehow. Well the thing is, if we look over here, what I was doing, I was saying I want to create it, but it's not just like you can go ahead and create and return it. If that were the case, I would be done right now, basically. Okay, because I'm just going to go ahead and binding this to that, right? But I have to go ahead and call this. Well, this deals with properties and whatnot. It's declarative, right? It's almost like VB written in XML, right? Just a bunch of properties. So what do we do here? What we have to do is basically cheat. I'm going to go ahead and hop over here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a property. Just right here, really simple. Create a property. Not going to need this. Not going to need this. And I'm going to go ahead and create this as a string. All right. And I'm going to call it bind. Not a big deal. Okay. And what I want to go ahead and do with bind is nothing more than say this get multi null. This is basically just a property wrapper of this. So when anything gets set to bind, this is called. So now we've propertyized it, whatever. So now we can deal with this. Let's save this, let's close this, let's compile this. That rebuild successfully. Okay. Let's get rid of this guy. And now let's go ahead and call that guy by setting this certain property. Bind. And then that's basically all we need to. We're going to just whatever, right? Doesn't matter. Set it to anything. It's going to say, say, bind me. Doesn't matter. Now, if I go ahead and run this, we'll see that it didn't even come close to working. That's because there's a weird space up there. Okay. So now, if we go ahead and run this, we have full declarative XAML binding to LLVL gen. And how I did that to review is I set up a mapping up here. This XML namespace. This CLR namespace is this northwind.dal. This matters. This matters because they are real in the real world, okay? This, you know, whatever, because we're just copying it here. Let's make sure these two guys match. This right here is going to go and match here. So what I'm going to do is in the data context, which we previously set in the code, I'm going to go ahead and set that in here. And I'm going to say I want this employee, uh, the collection, and I want to go ahead and call this. I, I say call this. I'm actually setting this, but really I'm using it to call the the bind method, the, the get multi rather. So there we go. You can actually see that you can go ahead and do this yourself. So if you have 
some property base, whatever, you can just go ahead and bring in your CLR namespace, start using your code, start using your code, and you can do it all in XAML. And this is a really nice way to do things. This is how you actually can get a lot of stuff done in the workflow, Windows Workflow Foundation. So there you go. It's rather a theoretical experiment there, but it's kind of cool. And of course, in the process, you learned a little bit about WPF.